Hi again. Remember these? In demystifying hand-painted yarns, I was playing around with these and trying to show you how the colors bled and formed new colors in between there. Join me in the studio today. We're going to identify. I'm going to teach you step by step on how to show how much real estate you're going to use per round so you can figure your hand painted out. All right, we're indoors and these are two skeins out of my stash. These are a Raukenia, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, yarn. And it's the new Nuble. It is extra fine merino wool and silk. It was hand dyed in Peru. You've seen this in the demystifying hand dyes yarn. And these are both of the same dye lot. So they were both dyed at the same time. Get these undone here. As you can tell, they're completely different. So most manufacturers, even hand dyers, artisan yarns, you know, all, everyone normally tells everyone to alternate skeins if you're going to do a large project. And this is why, as I keep telling you guys that you can't stop the dye, dye is wet. We have to soak the yarn in order to dye the yarn. So each one's gonna have its own different characteristics and traits. So what I'm gonna do today is explain to you a little bit more about how to find out the repeat of the round and also if you've already had it caked up at your local yarn shop on how to find your repeat out of a ball. So grab a cup of coffee or tea and I'll be right back with this belt up. Got my coffee. Got that balled up. And here's a few things that you're going to need. You are going to need a tape measure. And it's also handy to have a safety pin. And I'll show you why. Now, if you remember in demystifying yarns or hand painted, uh, most of the skeins out there are anywhere from 42 inches to 72 inches in diameter that would complete one whole repeat of the color. Now this one's gonna be a little bit difficult to track and trace because they kind of blend very well normally. You would pick one color to track that doesn't appear that often. So that way here you would definitely know what your repeat is. But since I already know, because I can measure this. So if you have your skein and it's not been caked up, the easiest way to do this is to pull out your handy dandy tape measure. And loosely to get an idea of their circum circumference. Now, it also will vary because certain yarns out there, especially non-superwash, will be different when it's skeined up compared to when it was dyed. So say this one might have been, because it is uh, non-superwash, it might have been different than what it once was. So if it's loose here and I have, if you can see this, let me bring it over. So I want to say this one did shrink because normally manufacturers work with even numbers. So I'm at like 50 and a half, just roughly, just loose. So say if you didn't have a skein, how are you going to find that? That's why I said normally you would pick one color out of the skein. Oh, I just skeined this up and it's going to be a bugger here. So this was my start. And it's this tan color here. So what I would tell you, and you need at least, I want to say, Go with lucky number seven here, loops. 
and try to line up the colors. It's kind of like playing a little game here. And nothing's written in stone. And that's why you want at least seven loops to see if you have the colors lining up correctly or not. Because that looks good about there, but yet I have white there. So let me pull out some more. And of course you'll have a little tangled mess, but that's all right. If you really, really, really want to know how this is going to work up, this is a must do. Because if you don't want it to pull, or if you want the colors to pull, depending on your project, this is something that you have to do. This way here to give you a better understanding on how this was dyed where the colors are going to go. This one's going to move really fast because the colors are really short and repeating. And I know this is taking a little bit of time here. And that's what's nice about it. You can take your time to figure this out. And I just hit the camera. Okay, now I've got my seven, my lucky seven, two, four, six, seven. This is as close as I got. And as you can tell, again, because the yarn stretches, I'm close. I'm extremely close. And how you can tell is if I Go back because here's my start over here forgive my arms here remember it does stretch so you're gonna want to keep some tension on it that's why it would be good if you wanted to now this is fingering weight so it doesn't work as well as something fatter like a DK or a worsted just put a clip at the one end I'm trying to go through this start line here and clip that instead of that we can always double the size right that would work so that's at zero and even if I stretch it out all the way three and a half. So I might be off just a little bit. But as I said, yarn is very stretchy, but you can tell that the colors are lining up even if they're just slightly off. But then you have strands in here that are completely dyed over. So and you can really tell by laying this out that this was dyed across by looking at the darker colors the the charcoal and almost black then you have the brown color and then this was left natural and it was just dyed across and then these and the in-between colors that you see say on this skein like this this is where the dye bled out to the natural because the natural was not dyed. And it created that off pink kind of mauve color here. So that's how 
you can tell how the skein is done is by rec trying to recreate it and like I said this one's a little difficult because it uses only three colors natural the brown and the charcoal so if you have something that's dyed out that has one definite color or you know whatever it'll be easier to tell I have one tip for you if you are dealing with local artisan yarns where you go to uh, shows and that you have a better chance of asking the dyer how they were dyed or say if the start and finish are dyed the same this is not the case in this yarn like I said this is hand painted but it's a commercial based yarn and as you can tell I started off here with a brown and the ties where it starts and ends which you'll be able to tell is where the four the tie, the, the tie around the yarn and then the start and finish this one is the charcoal gray black so and it didn't even end and the end yarn on this one that I just wound up is the brown so these were not lined up and say if an indie dyer or artist is very cognitive of their work they would line up all of the start and finishes to meet up so that say if you go and buy two or three skeins and you want to make something quite large you can depend on your start and finish yes it might vary because the yarn you know when it's dyed is wet and it moves a little bit but this is completely like I said that start and finish this is completely different than the skein even though they're the same dye lot so I hope that helps stay tuned for next week next week I'm going to show you how to figure out how much how many stitches you're going to do per round per repeat of color. I'm going to be using this one. Like I said, this one will move faster. You'll need a crochet hook. You'll need some time and patience. We'll do and some scrap yarn. We'll do a crochet cast on and show you how to count instead of doing all this math. It's easier if you're going to do a swatch, you might as well find out how many stitches it takes to get to the round. I hope this helps. So enjoy your cup of coffee. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Let's get to learning together. Until next time.